What is then meditation? We have only dealt with the waves. Authority, fear, there are just the waves on the surface of an ocean. Now we are going if you have gone so far, we are going into the depth of the ocean. You understand? We have only dealt with the superficiality of it all. Of course, you must be f- understand it, be free of it, know how to dive deeply. Not you dive, that comes about. First of all, there is a difference between concentration, choiceless awareness and attention. Please, are you all tired? I am afraid there is no other talk, so please pay attention to it. <laughs> there will be a discussion on Tuesday or Wednesday, five discussions, dialogues between us. But if you are tired, it doesn't matter, don't listen. Don't make an effort to listen, because that's a waste. There are these three things which we must understand – concentration, choiceless awareness and attention. Concentration implies resistance. Concentration on a particular thing, on the page you are reading, or on the phrase you are trying to understand, to concentrate, to put all your energy in a particular direction. That's one thing. I won't. I need to enlarge that, need I? There is in that concentration, there is resistance, and therefore there is effort and division. I want to concentrate, thought goes off on something else, I bring it back. The fight. Hmm? And if you are, love something, you concentrate very easily. All that is implied in the word to concentrate, to put your mind on a particular object or a particular picture, a particular action. That's one thing. Choiceless awareness implies to be aware, both objectively, outside and inwardly, without any choice, just to be aware of the colours, of the tent, of the trees, the mountains, the nature, just to be aware, not choose. Say, I like this, I don't like that. I want this, I don't want that. Right? To observe without the observer. The observer is the past which is conditioned, therefore, he is always looking. From that conditioned point of view, therefore there is like and dislike, my race, your race, my God, your God, all the rest of it. We are saying to be aware implies to observe the whole environment around you, the mountains, the trees, the ugly walls, the towns, aware, look at it. And in that observation, there is no decision, no will, no choice. Get it? You understand it? And attention, concentration, choiceless awareness and attention. In attending there is no centre, right? You are completely attending. Are you now, if I may ask, attending to what is being said? If you are completely, totally attending, there is no you who are attending. Is there? 
You understand? If you are listening complete with your heart and with your blood, everything, there is no me attending. Right? There is no me which limits that attention. Then attention then is limitless. Right? Therefore, attention then is has no space, has complete space. Attention there is not directed, whereas concentration is. Therefore, it limits space. So that you have to go into this very deeply and see if you have it. After laying, understanding all the waves on the surface, fear, sorry, they're all very petty little affairs compared to what we are going to. So the mind then, because insight implies emptiness, right? Emptying the whole of the consciousness of its content, empty, which is not through action of will, which is not through desire, which is not through choice, but seeing the nature of consciousness, your consciousness, not mine, your consciousness, with its content, fear, anxiety, my country, your country, I must be good, I'm content of it. Sorrow, longing, loneliness, the ache of that loneliness, separation, conflict, all that is the content of your consciousness. Right? And the content makes consciousness. Without the content, there is no consciousness. You understand? Now we are saying to when you have an insight into all this. Naturally then comes about the emptying of content. Therefore consciousness then is totally different, is of a totally different dimension. And meditation then is Because there is space, because there is emptiness, there is total silence. Not induced silence, not practiced silence, which are all just movement of thought and therefore absolutely worthless. But when you have done the, gone through all this, and there is great delight in going through all this. It's like playing a tremendous game. Then in that total silence there is a movement which is timeless, which is not measured by thought, because thought has no place in it whatsoever. Therefore, there is something totally sacred, timeless, 